Alright everybody, welcome back for the end of section one of our learning C++ tutorial series. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it up to this point, and hopefully I can continue teaching you things that you didn't know before. Um, there we go. I forgot to append that to the last one. Now, this episode is going to be a review of everything we've covered. I'm going to try to fit one of these in every 9, 10 episodes, just because I know that, you know, if you don't go back and review this, it's going to be really hard for you to retain anything. Now, I'm just going to say that, you know, most of these exercises have been dreamt up off the top of my head. It's been, you know, uh, a little bit of an experiment to see how quickly I can come up with things on the fly. So if you feel there's something I can improve to better teach you, please let me know. Now, okay, in this last episode, I introduced some new data types. Um, I've also talked a lot about variable declaration. And just to remind you, a variable can be named anything. It doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with the program you're, you're creating at all. An example is going to be something along the lines of int fuzzy duck equals one. Why? Because we can. It doesn't, these can hold any value we want. And fuzzy duck can be our variable as long as we go through there. Now there are certain variables that you're likely to see if you ever find yourself programming. Um, specifically, is going to be i, so I'm going to change that to z. In the future, you're going to see i used a lot as what's known as an iterator. So you probably won't want to use i for just anything, um, because that's probably going to be used in a lot of other places. Um, there's going to be other restrictions on names. Examples are minus minus, like I just did, um, plus plus. Um, as far as I know, you can't use the the equal sign or anything like that. the The best way to know if you can use uh, something as a variable declaration is does it serve another uh, type of function? in C++, and if it does, you probably can't use it. So no minus minus, no plus plus, no plus, no minus, no dollar sign, none of that. I think that it's pretty much just letters uh, and underscores, and that's really gonna be just about it. Um, I've never tried an apostrophe, I'm pretty sure you can't. But even still, that leaves you with a tremendously large amount of different things that you can name a, a variable. And again, as you can see down here, I've named my int m, my long n, my float o, my double p. You can really name them just about anything, and that's kind of what I wanted to get across. Now, every if statement has a few parts. It has the declaration that you're going to be using an if. It has the part in parentheses. This is often called a conditional. I'm fairly certain that I haven't used that word up till now. I don't know why, probably because I'm an idiot. Um, but a conditional is just what it sounds like. If a condition, so, you know, this is the condition, j equals true, then you're going to do something that's contained within. And in this case, it's it's a bit more complicated because it's nested. But as long as this condition comes out to true, you're going to do one thing. And then the other side of an if statement is known as an else. And the else is kind of the completing if this is not true. So in this case, what we're doing is we're spitting this out if not true. Now, we also have learned what scope operators are, and those are just these brackets that go in things. We have scope operators containing our int main, we have scope operators for our ifs, and in the future we'll have them for our functions, our while statements, our classes, 
our objects will you kind of go crazy with with these uh scopes and they're very important and we'll talk more about why in the future now with all that said that's pretty much all we've covered so far um just be sure that you're a little bit familiar with how to include libraries how to kind of format things um we did cover io manip so i suppose i'll just remind you guys of how we worked with that um io manip in this case was always used something like this we did c out uh, set ios flags ios fixed set ios flags ios show point and set precision two and so if you take a look we actually have this big ugly thing for p right here but with set precision two it's actually only going to print out to the 0.12 after the decimal and i will show you that real quick um probably should have done an endl but uh oh what have i done oh and apparently that's too big for long i lied to you and so that's definitely too big for double no actually it looks like it's fine so okay what you should be taking away from this is that you are going to have certain data types to work with. You're going to have to familiarize yourself with if statements and how they work. Aside from that, just get familiar with strings. You know, try out a couple of them yourself. Try out uh, a bool with an if. Try out, you know, uh, a character and see if you can make it see out later. And, you know, maybe try to make yourself a, a simple calculator. Uh, a program that you can select multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, maybe even that that uh, exponent that we talked about earlier, that would be a little difficult for you. And make a calculator. Make it, you know, a challenge to yourself. And once you figure out how to do all those things, you're going to be ready to proceed so long as you're comfortable. And you can catch up next video. Um, I hope that this helped. I hope that you'll subscribe, and I hope that you'll at least consider uh, watching my videos in the future. Have a nice night.